Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with a Coach. Today we have a question from Mojo Mosher who says, I guess my question is then, do you believe that traditional martial arts such as Shaolin, Kung Fu, Tai Chi, or Karate can actually stand a chance against MMA? Oh, is this a loaded question? Do you believe? Are you a lawyer, man? Am I on trial? Because lawyers do that, though. They'll stand in front of of the, the witness or in front of uh, the accused. Yeah, generally the accused, because they're trying to get that guy convicted. And instead of asking, what do you believe? They will make that assertion, do you believe? Is it not true that, you know, because that's a, that's a more powerful way to make somebody feel very uncomfortable, make them feel attacked, get them on the defensive. And when people get defensive, they often make mistakes. So, careful how you word these questions. Do I believe that traditional martial arts such as Shaolin Kung Fu, Tai Chi, or Karate can actually stand a chance against MMA? And he goes on to tell this story. I constantly talk with other people, and there seems to be a lot of style pride on the MMA guy's side. My teacher says that it all comes down to the practitioner, and he is in the Guinness Book of World Records for doing a bunch of push-ups and stuff like that. Um, I would strongly recommend you watch an interview I did with Elong, a Chinese kickboxer, um, famous guy here in China. He... He had this, this Shaolin monk gimmick going on, right? You've probably heard of him if you watch a lot of uh, martial arts stuff on the internet. You've probably seen videos titled something like Shaolin Monk Destroys MMA Fighters, even though there are no Shaolin monks in those videos and no MMA fighters because he's a kickboxer. It's a kickboxer with a gimmick. But I did this interview with him and I asked him, on behalf of those traditional martial artists who want to experience success in mixed martial arts or kickboxing or Muay Thai or some other combat sport like that, what should they do if they want to make that transition? And his answer was so interesting because he said, first, humble yourself. Now you come coming from a place where from your perspective, it looks like the other guys are proud. Oh, these these prideful MMA guys who think they're the best of the best because, oh, they think they can beat anyone. Okay. Take Elong's advice. Humble yourself. Remove the beam from your own eye before you attempt to take the moat out of your brother's eye, my brother, so that you may see more clearly. Very wise man taught that. Anyway, let's read the rest of this question. He says, I watch Joe Rogan and sometimes he pisses me off. Ah, that, that dang Joe Rogan pissing people off. One, I was listening to Joe Rogan's podcast earlier today and, and he repeated something he often repeats, which is, don't listen to me. I'm an idiot. I'm a stand-up comedian and a cage fight commentator. And yet everybody, everybody wants to... Take my opinion on everything as gold, as, as the gold standard. I'm an idiot, guys. He repeats this over and over again. So it's, it's so interesting that we get comments like this. Joe Rogan, man, that guy just pisses me off. Um, biased as hell says Mojo Mosher. He is always saying that the movements don't work and that you have to have a willing partner in order for it to work. Well, in all fairness, I have seen many martial arts classes that consisted of teaching that fits that description. That's not saying necessarily that yours is like that, but I know of many that actually are. Now, moving on, reading the question. And he, Joe Rogan, cites Kung Fu a lot. Okay. It w personal pet peeve here. Let's let that pet peeve out of the cage. When people like yourself say Kung Fu as if it is a fighting style, as if it's one thing, there are over 400 different Chinese martial arts 
that are Kung Fu. Man, there are over 400 different Kung Fu styles out there. So when people talk about Kung Fu like it's a fighting style, I mean, that's, that's kind of silly. That's kind of weird. And, and you could say that about a lot of different martial arts like karate. There are lots of different karate styles. There are a number of different martial arts, Japanese martial arts, that are karate and a lot that are not. Same thing with Salat. There are a number of different styles of Indonesian martial arts that are Salat. Okay. Anyway, just a little pet peeve there. I'm branching off into a lot of tangents before we even get through this question. So he, Joe Rogan, cites Kung Fu a lot and then goes on to mention Bruce Lee, like many others do, without even understanding Bruce's concepts. Okay. However, I am of the understanding that situations, circumstances, and amount of practice are the, de the deciders and who may win in a fight between fighters of two different styles, as well as knowledge of how to take advantage of any given circumstances when they come your way. I'm just wondering what are your thoughts on this subject? Okay, now that is all well and good and noble and understandable, and it sounds right from an academic perspective to term it the way you did. We have fighters from different styles, so it's going to come down to what they put into it and so on, and it's not about the style, blah, blah, blah. We've beaten that horse to death over and over again to the point where that horse has come back from the dead as an undead zombie and it wants to eat our brains. But let's beat it just a little bit more. Let's, let's shoot it in the head. Let's put it out of its misery before it bites somebody else and starts a zombie apocalypse. We have one too many apocalypses on our hands as it is and the stay-pocalypse, man, it's, uh, it's hard enough on the world as it is. So, anyway, shooting this zombie horse in the head. Do you know how to do a double leg takedown? Do you know how to sprawl? Do you know how to sit out and duck under? Do you know what a single leg takedown is? Do you know how to do it? Do you know how to defend it? Do you know how to clear ties and pummel for grips? and use an underhook. Do you know what any of those words mean? If not, you're going to have a serious problem if you attempt to compete in a contest of mixed martial arts. If your martial art doesn't teach what those things are, and those are really, really fundamental, basic concepts from wrestling, not even touching on submission, grappling, jujitsu, Muay Thai, etc., clinch fighting, and so on. Not even getting into any of the nuances of the other aspects of mixed martial arts. Just basic wrestling. Like something, something the lowest level high school wrestler would understand. If you are not even there, if your martial art doesn't teach that, you will not do well in a cage fight. You won't, because you don't know what sport you're competing in. So a number of the traditional martial arts mentioned are striking arts, and they're beautiful arts, and they have a lot of great reasons to train in these martial arts. They're, you know what, nothing against them, right? Health and fitness and cultural sensitivity and learning and all this other stuff. Go team traditional martial arts, right? But if you're not learning how to participate in the sport of mixed martial arts. You won't be any good at the sport of mixed martial arts. 
Do you see where I'm going with this? You may as well ask something along the lines of this. I really like karate. I think karate is cool. I train karate. And I want my karate to ensure me success in the game of baseball. But I don't actually know how to pitch a ball or catch a ball or hit the ball. And I don't know what a shortstop is and I don't know what a home run is. Do you think it is just and fair for people to say that my karate is no good for baseball? Now, that might seem like a stretch. It might seem like, well, that's not a fair comparison because karate and MMA are both fighting things, right? They both have punches and kicks. Yeah, they, they do. And there's a lot that is very, very dissimilar between those two things. And if you cannot see that, if you have not seen that, you don't know what a cage fight is. You don't know what MMA is. If you put a guy who knows how to wrestle and knows how to box and knows how to knock you out with head kicks and knows how to strangle you to death and break your arms in all kinds of creative and interesting ways at will, and you put him against a guy with one strong skill set, there is a high probability that the guy who knows more will do better in that fight. Now, that may make you angry. That may piss you off. It may piss you off in the same way that Joe Rogan, a, a self-proclaimed idiot who is just a stand-up comedian and cage fight commentary that people take very seriously because he's got a popular podcast with some very intriguing guests on there sometimes. But the wicked take the truth to be hard, man. The wicked take the truth to be hard. When somebody tells you, you are wrong and gives you objective proof that you are wrong about something, the gut wrench reaction is anger. Why do you think you know so much about the teachings of Bruce Lee? To the point where it makes you angry when you feel like Joe Rogan misinterprets it. I, I can only remember one, one video I saw where Joe Rogan was actually talking about uh, Bruce Lee. He was watching um, that Bruce Lee sparring clip, you know, the only existing video, Bruce Lee doing some sparring with two of his students, I think it was Dan Inosanto and Taki Kimura, I think, and Joe Rogan, Eddie Bravo were watching this, and they were shockingly complimentary about it. They were like, wow, this is, this is really amazing, especially for the time. Especially for the time, and... And in this, uh, this part of the world where everybody in the martial arts community, at least that Bruce Lee knew of, was doing, you know, point fighting and weren't really sparring seriously. And Bruce Lee was making a, an honest attempt to introduce this idea, hey guys, we can actually punch and kick each other and you're not going to explode and die and, and we should do this more often. This is, this is a good idea for training. So there's a lot of anger in your question. A lot of deep-seated anger, and I'm guessing that's coming from bullying. And I've, I've fielded some questions like this before from, from young men who practice traditional martial arts and they feel like they're bullied, generally cyber-bullied by people on the internet, by, 
by fanboys, UFC fanboys, who are like, oh yeah, well, well, an MMA fighter would beat a kung fu guy because reasons, and here's a video where it happened, and you suck, and I'm awesome. I'm guessing you had some kind of interaction like that, and that upset you, and okay, I get it, I get it. But don't let that blind you to the reality of what a cage fight is and what karate isn't. Because one of those things is not like the other. A karateka has a very specific skill set. An MMA fighter has a very specific skill set. A baseball player has a very specific skill set. And if you're trying to cross over into a different sport with a different skill set than the one you have, you will not experience the type of success that you want to have. So, have we beat that dead horse to death yet again? I hope so. Let's bury it. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.